Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in. Welcome in. It is Wednesday, April 29th. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. And we have got some crazy stuff to talk about today. I am pumped up about it. Obviously, we will get to our NFL draft recap, but uh, but there's some other stuff that went on today that we're going to talk about. But before we get started with that, go and check us out online. WinningCuresEverything.com is the website. Uh, I have scheduled everything out. I have been working furiously on the new website. It will be up on Monday uh, or Sunday night at some point. But uh, I have scheduled everything out. I know exactly what I'm going to be doing. So it will be up on Sunday night slash Monday morning. We'll be ready to rock and roll. McKinnon already jumps in on Facebook, said, boys, we back. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, we appreciate everybody that jumps in uh, in the afternoons with us. It is always a good time. We try and have a lot of fun with this thing. So uh, winningcureseverything.com is the website. You can follow us on any of our live streaming apps, Periscope, Twitch, YouTube. Uh, what's the last one? But I, I forget what the other one is. Facebook. But <laughs> they're all the same to me. They all run to they all run together. It is what it is. Um, we are trying out Instagram today. Uh, Huey said, "Are you not on YouTube?" Uh, it's showing that we're on YouTube. I don't know. I'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, yesterday's didn't go through to YouTube, so I don't know what happened. But uh, but yeah, so far I think we're good. I think we're on YouTube. I think everything's fine. But uh, but yeah. Um, so make sure you follow us over there. Make sure that you follow us on whatever your favorite podcasting app is. Uh, Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, etc. Leave a nice review. Share the show out. Tell you buddies about it. And if you would like to jump in, um, the chat is on your screen. It's very easy to see. You Everything that you type in will go right there on the screen for everybody else to be able to see. It will not just be one platform. All of the platforms join together in that nice little box that's in the bottom left corner. So, make sure that you jump in. Give us some things to discuss. Uh, we, we like to hear different ideas on the topics that we're bringing up. First things first, we're going to get away from sports for just a moment. The Spinosaurus. They found a fossilized tail of a Spinosaurus. They've been looking for this for forever. They found it in Morocco. And... What they found was the tail is that of an aquatic animal. It has a paddle on the end. It's basically a fin. And this is massive. A Spinosaurus is is almost as big as a T-Rex. So the fact that there's a paddle on the end and that this thing is, is used to travel through water, this makes it, and I quote, the most extreme aquatic adaptation ever seen in a large dinosaur. Think about how terrifying that would be. If you, I mean, this is this is basically Godzilla, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I guess, yeah. More, I would assume that it'd be more mobile than Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. It, it's got like this long beak thing. It's got this gigantic fin on its back. Like it, it would look like a shark coming out of the water. Only it would be the size of a whale, you know, or if something. You can something live in water. Yeah. Then it's then it's far more dangerous. Just just for the fact that. There's so much of the earth that it can populate or or maneuver around than the animals that lived on land. Oh, yeah. Uh, Huey said if they try to bring them back to life, there's literally five movies about how bad of an idea this is. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. It's a terrible idea to try and bring it back to life. But the fact that we have found this out means that Jurassic, uh, Jurassic Park 3, I think it was, that had the Spinosaurus, was uh, just completely wrong about the type of animal. Well, it, Maybe not completely wrong because they did have that thing popping up out of the water at one point. Um, you've got like this new Nintendo Switch game, Animal Crossing. They've got a big skeleton in there, and they've got it completely wrong. Like this is this is crazy. Like they they found something revolutionary in the paleontology world. And look, I'm a dinosaur nut. I don't know a ton about it, but I love dinosaurs. I love all but the Jurassic like Park it. stuff. Yeah, I love it. It's it's interesting to me. Yeah. And this is fascinating stuff, man. It, I just, I couldn't imagine seeing a, a creature that size swimming around in the in the water. Like, that would be terrifying to me. So, 
<laughs> like, it, yeah. it, it, what, what are your thoughts on this? Is this bananas? No, I mean, I definitely think if it's an amphibious animal, then, I mean, it gives it more of an ability to survive. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, if we, we talk about the the million different op- options or the, the, the different philosophies that go by that, that ended the dinosaurs, and, and if you were able to survive underwater, in water, then you were able to last a hell of a lot longer than the rest of them. Uh, you got that right. You got that right. It's uh, it's freaky to think about. They've got a they've got Jurassic World three coming out at some point. I think next year or something like that. Uh, off topic. Did you see that AMC is banning all Universal Studios pictures from from their theaters going forward? Yeah, I don't know what that's about. Uh, but because I also they, they try released, to stay away from mainstream news. They released uh, trolls on video on demand. You know, so it, like so all the kids could see it because obviously theaters were not open when they released it. So they just put it out for twenty bucks. Anybody that's you know got yeah. one of these streaming apps can buy it, and it was massively successful. So Universal, I mean, they they set all kinds of revenue records with this, and Universal Studios said, okay, well, going forward, we're going to release it on demand, you know, and in theaters. Ah, and, and okay, AMC said, and not at our place, you're not. Which yeah. means. The Halloween movies that they make, the Jurassic World movies, like all these gigantic films that are meant really to be seen in theaters are not going to be at AMC theaters. Now, we live in Memphis. We've only really got Malco. I was just um, about to say, I, it was a long time before I knew what an AMC theater was. That's it, Hey, they've got them in Chicago, and they are awesome. I mean, it, they are incredible theaters. Uh, you, you hate that for all the people. That, I mean, it's going to... It's going to kill these movies. Like, trying to figure out box office projections from from here on will be impossible. So I don't know, man. I think the on-demand option is a pretty good good one. I just do. Oh, I agree. It's going to put theaters out of business. Like, it's... Which which sucks. Um, but, I mean, we got 85 theaters, like, 85 movie theaters. I, I was just about like to say, I don't know that it's going to put them out of business. The, the There's definitely going to be a... You come to the Memphis area, which is... You know, we're a decent sized city. Yeah. We're what, like the thirteenth largest city in the country. We were at one point in time not too long ago. Yeah. Um but but yeah, how many how many Malcos do we have? There's at least twelve. Yeah, I think it's I think it may be more than that. And and so if half of those die, is that killing the the movie business? No, it just yeah. means that we got six really big, nice ones. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, McKinnon said, honestly, I think theaters have been on their way out since online streaming took off. And Huey said, plus some jerk texting in the movie. So, yeah, oh, he said, uh, uh, yeah, nothing like paying 20 bucks for a bucket of popcorn and a Twix bar than having to take a whiz in the middle of a movie. Like, oh. yeah, yeah, I understand that. And that that's fine. That's uh, fine. I like going to movies. I, I enjoy it. I, I will tell you that it was in February the last time. I, all, I, I seriously contemplated, is this going to be the first fist fight I get into? <laughs> Is is I I went to see a movie. Don't remember what it was. It was an afternoon situation where I just had my afternoon free, and a guy answered his phone and had a I don't know eight minute conversation. And I thought, and like the guy in, in the middle like, of the movie, I'm just an asshole, and I'm kind of always looking for a fight. And my first thought was, I'm sitting above him. I got the high ground. <laughs> I think I'm going to say something. I'm going to be real rude about it. So I did a couple of times and the guy stared and gave me the eyes and I gave him the crazy eyes right back. Like you want to, we're going to do this. Let's do this. It was only like four of us in the theater. And I'm not exaggerating when I tell you, I thought the rest of the time he's talking and I'm just sitting there thinking, am I really about to get in a fight? Like, is it like, do I text my wife? Do I like, who do I call? (laughs) Before this thing goes down, because I know we're going to get arrested. Like, there's no getting out of this. It's not a crowd. We can't hide in. And as soon as he hung up the phone, I was like, real mature asshole. Now, why don't you get the hell out of here? And the guy stood up, and I was like, holy shit, it's about to happen. And then he grabbed what I couldn't see underneath the chairs was his walker. (laughs) Oh, my God. He wasn't an old man. He was just a guy that was hurt, obviously. And I was like, well, at least if this comes to blows, I know I'm not getting my ass kicked. There you go. There you go. As soon as I saw the walker, I was like, yeah, that's right. Just stepping. (laughs) I got got real tough then. I got real jerky then. Uh, 
My God. Uh, Huey said, you don't have bail money in an envelope at home. And McKinnon said, Chris, how have you not been in a fist fight? No, no, Chris. Chris is a nice guy. I'm laid back. I'm easy yeah. going. I only talk trash when I get really intoxicated. And, really and I'm irritated. around a lot of other people that I, not a lot of, a few people that I know are real tough guys. Yeah. Then, then I get mouthy. But <laughs> McKinnon, other than that, I'm pretty easy going. McKinnon said, let me tell you, Memphis area jails suck. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, they, well, I was yeah. in I was in Olive Branch. I was I was in Olive Branch, so I probably would have went to Hernando. Which yeah, probably. I'm so. sure that's not a cake wall. And, and you wouldn't have stayed there because that's not like a that, that ain't. A oh no, I've got bail. By the way, yeah, the yeah, I got I would have gotten bailed out. But I'm just trying to think of how the rest of this day is going to go if this goes down. I'm trying to think of what movie that was. I went to. It was a dude movie. It wasn't a great movie. I don't. I'd have to go back and look at what movies were out. That was like a like a. <laughs> How long? Know. How long ago was this? This was February. This, this oh, this was, was February this year. Everything broke down. Good um, Lord, <laughs> Jesus! I don't remember. I don't. I couldn't even tell you the movie. Good gracious! And Michael jumps in on Twitch. He said, "Sup, fellas? What's up, Michael? We uh, we got the regular crew in here today. That's always good. Everybody, make sure you get your comments in. We would appreciate those. Let's uh, let's go ahead and change topics real quick. All right. The NCAA uh, approved the name, image, likeness stuff this morning. Uh, we're not going to spend a whole long time on this. We're probably going to get attorney Lynn Simon back on here uh, to to kind of give us the rundown on exactly what this means. But what I what I wanted to talk about is a lot of people initially were championing this, right? Yes, this is great. They were applauding. Finally, the players are going to get paid. This is great. But there are so many provisions in this thing. There's so many things that the kids cannot do. And my initial thought process on this was you need to open it up for everything. You cannot just do this and and limit what they can do. Everything has to be on the table. Otherwise, what is the point, right? So initially in this, uh, or not initially, just flat out, there will not be an NCAA football game because the NCAA will not allow the players to be paid by EA Sports or any other gaming company. So... They will not. And be there's able no to argument for why, right? Like we just we don't like video games. We don't like the concept of you being on them. I don't think. I think there's more to it than that, and that's why I want to have Lynn on, right? I, like, I, it doesn't make any sense to me because it's not like they would be getting massive paychecks. No. You yeah. Know? What What do the NFL guys make? You like sixteen uh, thousand a year? Yeah, sixteen to seventeen thousand a year. Like they, From they so they had been Come holding on. theirs for a lockout, and <laughs> it's so funny. It's it, everybody talked this big game about holding these uh, these checks just in case there was a lockout. But one of them was like $16,700, and one was like $17,500. Like, that's what you get per year for your appearance in this video game. It ain't yeah. much, you know? And I understand, like, you're, you would get royalties off of sales and all that. You get the point, right? All that stuff would end up really coming after you get out of college. So what does it matter at that point? But... Either way, uh, the NCAA is not letting them do that. Uh, they cannot have the team logo on local ads that they are, you know, called. I'm in okay for. with that. I'm so, totally okay with you not being able to have the the right to like. Just because you play for LSU doesn't mean you get to sell the license to LSU. That agreed, is licensed but, trademark stuff. Right, right. That. But if, if this is a company that already has a license deal with them they should be able to appear with the team logo, I think. Like, to show, oh, because yeah, a lot yeah, of these... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If they've already paid for the license, then... So, adding the player, they have to then remove the trademark Yeah, well, no, they, they have to do separate ads. They can't appear in the same ad. Like, that's, that's what's... All right, so that's just stupid. That's see just what I'm dumb. saying? This is... You get my point. Like, right now, like, the Dr. Pepper ads, like, you know, they're, they're doing this fake town, this fake thing, because they're not paying for the licensing to use, you know... Tuscaloosa Alabama or Baton Rouge. Or Florida. Or, yeah. Why would they do that? But if they paid for it, then, and they wanted real players, then why could they not do that? Uh, McKinnon jumps in. He said, athletes already get paid. How can this be any more of a substantial amount? If you have to, let them put it in a savings account they can't access until after college. It's too easy. Give me another one. It, yeah, we've been talking about that too. You know, yeah, but it, it's. I, I'm, I'm okay if you ever want it to say it has to go in a trust and you don't get to touch the money until 
you know, you're you're no longer an athlete. You can accrue it during yeah. this time. I don't think part you can me, say it has to part be of me like thinks that that's graduation. A, here's the thing I think we're really good at in this country. Everybody's really good at liking to tell other people what the fuck to do. Yes. Yes. Okay? Yes. That's the truth. Yes. All right. And and that's just we just like controlling other people. It's not even moral high ground stuff. We just like telling people what they can have, what they can't have, what they can do, what they can't do. And it's stuff like that that pisses me off. And so I used to be on the thing where, oh, like, it's fine. Like, if that's the deal that it takes to make this thing happen, then I'm okay with it. But I also think, man, fuck you. You don't want this 18-year-old kid to have it, but it's okay for him to have it when he's 21, 22. Yeah. Like, really? Come on. That's uh, Michael on Twitch. He said, uh, then what's the point? That's the only thing I care about talking about the video game. Uh, he said, I'm stuck here playing NCAA 2014 with Denard Robinson on it. Like, yeah, I, Shoelace Robinson, I'm, I'm with you. Now, just a little secret. You can uh, you can download updated rosters. I play NCAA 14 basically every day when I hop on the elliptical. So, you can download updated rosters. But, but that's the point. Uh Michael said, amen, Chris, and McKinnon said, big facts, humans love control and power. Um, The other thing that they are not allowing kids to do is they cannot sign massive national endorsements. And there's, obviously, the language is different than what I just said, but they can't go sign a deal with Coca-Cola. They can't go sign a shoe contract. They can't, like, all these massive companies, they can't do national ads. So, basically, they are limiting this to uh, the state or the town in which they are going to school. They're, that is putting a, a limit on what they are able to earn, and that is ridiculous to me. I'm just, I always, whenever there is a rule, whenever there is a law, my first question is, why do we have this? I still have that question. Yeah. I would like to know what you're trying to prevent you're, so obviously you're trying to prevent these kids from becoming millionaires because nobody in your local town is going to pay you, you know, million dollars. All right. We just don't have that kind of money floating around usually for the most part, but well, they're, they're still trying to sell this idea of amateurism and how can you be an amateur if you're making a million dollars from a car dealership or something but, like that. But right? what now, now it's just a dollar figure. I mean, literally it's the concept that the old joke at the bar that says, you know, hey, would you sleep with me for 20 bucks? The chick says no. And he says, well, I mean, I got a million dollars. Would you sleep with me for that? She says, oh, hell yeah. Well, we've already established what you are now. Yeah. Now now it's just a negotiation. Now yeah. it's just all about money. Now it's just a haggle. Like, this is this is stupid. I'm okay with them making 20,000. I've heard people say this. I'm okay with them making 20 or 30,000 a year, but anything more than that's ridiculous. Why? Because you got a bullshit job that only pays you 20 or 30,000 a year. And you can't imagine these kids could make more than you give them five minutes and let them go to the pros. They're going to make a hell of a lot more than you. Yes. A hundred. And here's the thing. You're the, you're the fan that loves screaming their name. From the sidelines, you're the guy that shows up to these games. That's How it. is it that you're upset that these kids make money? Johnny, they make more than you. Okay. Johnny Manziel at the time, Tim Tebow at the time, those guys were massive stars, nationally massive stars. They were incredibly relevant. They were worth millions of dollars while they were still in college. Before yep. they could even go to the NFL, they were worth that kind of money. Uh, Michael says, either do it all or nothing. Huey jumps in. Hey, you're going to love this one. Uh, I think this opens the possibility of the kids getting involved with shady people. 20-year-old kids with money can be dumb and let people use them. <laughs> like, yes. That's what's going on right now. Like, 17-year-olds. That's, that's, that's like, what we're trying to prevent, by the way. That's yes. all I want that's, is I, all of the pain that. of players. I know these kids make money, and I know that it's not $100 handshakes. Yeah. I know that it's lots of it's hundreds of thousands of dollars for the top tier kids okay yeah. i know that i want to bring it out of the darkness and into the light that's it that's yeah. all i'd like to do no you're you're 100 right mckinnon jumps in he said i feel like most of this is going to inevitably have to change if operations like the g league take off and kill college sports the only major benefit to playing for the g league versus college is a pretty damn good salary uh, that's that's true the g league is not going to kill college sports no uh there's there's not enough slots open like they, they might take ten to fifteen kids a year. And With that philosophy, that? there are seven. We got into this with Lynn. There are seven layers of minor league baseball, and it didn't kill college baseball. Yeah. 
like, it, like it just, it just didn't. Okay. No, it's, it's At not some going point to. in time, these kids are going to say, I'd rather go to college and live that lifestyle and have to go to class for six months than, because that's a lot of fun. Yeah. And go live on the road and, I promise you, these kids at the G League are not staying at the Four Seasons. They're not staying at Trump no, Tower. They're, they're not staying at the Ritz Carlton. They're bussing all they over the place. They are staying at the Days Inn in the shithole town. Yeah, okay? and it's and yeah, they're making five hundred thousand dollars for one season, and it's yes. to prepare them for this stuff. But it ain't glamorous. You're not no, playing in a room full of people. I promise you, the bus that they're riding is not the private jet that Bama's rolling in on. I'll tell it's, you this: it's just not. They, they would have more national television games. Their stock price. Uh, as far as being able to do endorsements and whatnot, would would make them more money if they went to college, like period. Like yeah, you see what Zion Williamson became at Duke. Absolutely, you know, Absolutely. and that's it. That's the biggest thing. John ja Morant, same thing. Like well, John ja Morant would have never gone the to the two guys. Like the two guys that you named, okay, and then I can give you two more, which were Eli and Peyton, farther back. The yeah. reason those guys are far more valuable than Burrow and Cam Newton and Kyler Murray and those guys is they became stars in college at sophomores or yeah. freshmen. And we got two to three to four years out of them. Okay. Yeah. If college basketball ever wants massive fandom, they will find a way to keep these kids for three years. All yeah. right. And if they're making good money with big national endorsements and they don't have to jump to the NBA immediately, then they might stay for a couple of years. Yeah. No, and I, then the right. product just gets better and better and better over time. Yeah, no, you're you're 100% right. Um, Huey was replying to McKinnon here. He said, uh, I, was in, I was a D1 athlete in college. People flocked to the top guys and used them uh, waiting on that payday. Uh, keeping some of these kids in school for basketball would make the game better, allow them to get better adjusted before that jump to the pros. Uh, McKinnon said, uh, me too, except I wasn't very athletic. Uh, <laughs> uh, my, uh, Michael then closed it out. If players are allowed to go to legit agents, then it starts hurting that shady D-bags uh, that work under the table. It's not going to hurt on. anyone to it let starts, them... Oh, go ahead, finish. I didn't know he was finished. So yeah, it, ahead, finish his reading. He said, it's not going to hurt anyone to let them make some money off their name. Don't let a few getting in trouble ruin it for everyone else. No, this is this is the people that are the people that are going to be upset by this are your big money boosters and your bag men. Yeah, like like we have the the dirty underbelly are the lobbyists of college football keeping it the way it is. Yes, hundred percent. And, and I also think it is those top tier programs that out recruit everybody every year because I think they outpay everybody right now. And if everybody came to the surface, if the, all the money came in the light, then 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 your paydays don't matter anymore. You know, then, then, you know, one school can outpay you by $200,000. Well, right now it's a lot of money. But, but if you're a mega star and you've got to deal with Visa or, or, you know, you know, Coca Cola, then it doesn't matter anymore. Like yeah. that 200 grand is not going to get me, you know, to go to one school over another. I'm going to pick the school I just want to go to. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, let's go ahead and move on. Let's, uh, let's change topics again. Sean Payton. Now, I'm kind of excited about this topic, and I, I hope that it doesn't take us uh, too terribly long to discuss it. But um, he said over the weekend, I'm trying to pull it up here on my on my phone here, he said that there are only 10 to 11 relevant NFL teams at any given time. This was his exact quote. He said, uh, I say this in all seriousness. He told JoeBucksFan.com, there's only about 10 or 11 relevant teams when someone like Tom Brady comes to Tampa, it's not just the quarterback position. The thing as a coach in the division that concerns you is you know the standard's going to change. And I think that's a credit to the really, really, really special players. Um, so the Buccaneers, in Peyton's estimation, have moved from the 20 or so irrelevant teams to the 10 or 11 relevant ones. He said, we're watching a month of my man Michael Jordan here, Peyton said, uh, in reference to the Last Dance documentary. He brought up everyone else around him, and I think that same thing will happen with Tom Brady. So... You, we can talk about Tom Brady, all that. We've obviously talked a lot about him on the show already uh, over over the last few weeks. My question is, who are the 10 or 11 relevant teams in the NFL right now? Uh, obviously, we have to list Tampa right now. Um, but who who are the other ones? 
So and let Chris go ahead and let's let's try and come up with ten or eleven so that I, are actually relevant. This, I believe this is a Bill Parcells thing that he got. He comes from the Bill Parcells coaching tree. Yeah. Okay. And and Parcells used to always talk about how there's eight to ten teams in the league. That's it. That's it. That you actually care about. Every and year. the other twenty, yeah. if you beat them, great. If you lose to them, don't beat yourself up. But you're not competing against them because they're not going to be there in January. They're just not. And that's not going to be a tiebreaker. It's not going to swing a fence. It's not going to do any of that. So just move on. And and if you lose to a good team, you got to figure out why you lost to that team. Okay? You don't yeah. necessarily have to figure out why you lost to a bad team. You just move on from that loss and, and try to get better. Good team, you got to figure out why you lost to them because you're going to play them again. All right? Yep. You're right. And these two are the I got, same division. I got 10 teams, and, and, and I think there are other teams in here. But if you told me – I had to have 10 teams right now that I think are the most relevant, and I stopped it at 10. There's a couple of teams that have potential to be really good that I left off. Hey, Huey, Huey talked about this. Um, he said, uh, first, he said the SEC is the top conference because it doesn't have a salary cap. And he said a good example of that was Auburn with Cam Newton. Uh, when he played Mississippi State early in the year, both teams were evenly matched. Cam was the difference. He brought that team up, and he was the highest paid player in the NCAA that year. So that year. No, yeah. no doubt, no um, doubt. But that that's that's a great example of of exactly what Tom Brady is doing with Tampa Bay right now. Um, and we haven't seen it on the field yet. Obviously, remains to be seen. But uh, but as far as the ten or eleven relevant teams, so we've got Tampa. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and toss the Saints in there, and that'll give us two. Now, do you, as far as relevant teams, I guess it depends on on what we're what we're saying here. Like when, would, when Sean Payton is talking about relevancy, he's talking about a team that can win the Super Bowl. All right, so that doesn't necessarily That's all he mean, cares about. There are only 10, 8 to 10 teams every year that have a chance to win the Super Bowl before it starts off. Yes, we're all 0-0. Zero and zero. Yes, we all got hope. We just drafted our teams and we like our rosters. Yeah. It does not matter. As soon as this thing starts playing football, there are only 8 to 10 teams that really have a chance to win the Super Bowl. Everybody else is playing to be better next year. All right, so let's go ahead and add the Ravens and the Chiefs. Yep. Uh, we'll add the 49ers. Yep, no doubt. So that gives us five at this point. Uh, do we toss in the Packers? I, you can. I would not. I don't think that team's great, but I'm, I'm biased. I mean, they made the that. NFC Championship last year. Okay. So who do you already have a list of 10 right there? Yeah. Go ahead and read them off, and, and we'll, we'll debate it a little bit. So we've got those. I've got okay. the Vikings. Okay, I, I agree I've with that the, one. I've got the I've got the Colts. Uh, basically, mm. I'm looking at strong foundation from a front office that have been there for a couple of years to lay a foundation of the team. I'm looking for a strong quarterback. I'm looking for a strong head coach. All of these things you have to have. All right. Okay. The Colts. The Colts have a great front office and a really good team ready to go. They were a quarterback away last year. Andrew Luck killed them. Um, I, I like. I think Seattle is one of those teams that that has that. Um, did I say the Vikings? I think the Bills are one of those teams that they're there. I don't trust their quarterback, but I think they're a relevant team. I think it's really hard. I got to eight or nine pretty easily. The Bills, I think, is a bit of a stretch, but I like that team personally. I would have them as a relevant team. And then I still would have, if you made me give you ten, I would I would put the Patriots only because Bill Belichick that people think Tom Brady left and that team's going to suck. That offense sucked all along last year, and they were still really really good at football. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So 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 if you if you think that that defense, I've said it before, that we all just assume Tom is gone, and so therefore they're going to fall away. That defense could win eight games with you and me at, at quarterback. You put a put a capable, competent person there. They're I, I would still bet them to win ten games this year, no question. We'll uh we'll we'll get to that because they they released the uh the NFL season win totals, okay. um, and uh, we'll talk about that with our draft recap and whatnot as we go. Um, but yeah, I could well, I could. Who see would that. you have that I don't have on here? Um, let's see. I mean, I I would put the Packers on there. Uh, I think the Steelers are relevant every year. Um, I say you had Seattle, right? I had Seattle. Yeah, and I think uh, 
I mean, hell, that gets me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you take got the Bills and the Patriots off and you add the Packers and the Steelers, that's ten. Yeah, that's that's ten. So that I think that's I think that's what I would do. Um you know, I I don't have the Rams on here. And, yeah, and I don't have this because I don't If you're going to take the Patriots off, you got to take the Rams off because Jared Stidham is just as good as, as Jared Goff. I'm going to tell you that right now. That's oh. true. Jared Goff's not yeah. great at quarterback. They yeah. got an offensive genius for a head coach. Yeah. Uh, and they got a lot of talent on that team, but they're not a very stable organization. So Michael tossed in uh, the Broncos, uh, but everybody I else. Did. Oh, he said, uh, he said. They're not relevant yet, brother. Yeah, not yet. Uh, he, he said Philly. Uh, I think they got, I, some, no. they got some stuff to work on. Uh, Huey said the media throws the Cowboys in there every single year. Um, okay, that's and the media. Then, and then Michael said he would toss in the Vikings and the Seahawks. So I have the Vikings have the Seahawks. And then, yeah, like I said, I I gotta have a good I gotta have a good organization that's stable. I gotta have a front office that's stable. I gotta have a head coach and I gotta have a quarterback. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And and that's so so I could get eight really easily from that. But I think those eight are it. I really do. Yeah. I don't think the Steelers are winning the Super Bowl. I don't think the Packers are winning the Super Bowl. I don't My, think the Patriots are winning the Super Bowl. Michael said Rams gambled the franchise and lost. That's it. He's they 100%, 100% right. Yeah. They, they went did. all in. Now they have no draft capital and no cap room. They cannot get better. They can only get worse the next couple of years. Yeah. That's it. Uh, they went until all they in have guys, and it bit them. Yeah, until they have guys fall off of those uh, those contracts. Yep. I mean, you got you got no room to move. And you don't have any draft capital. You yeah. can't trade those guys either because the contracts suck. Oh yeah, like because nobody's going to take that. So nope. they went all in. That's that's exactly right. And yeah. they lost. They went all in. Uh, let's go ahead. We are thirty minutes in. So why don't we go ahead and start in? This is our NFL draft recap. If you have not watched, Chris explained it the first two days. I'll explain it today. Uh, trying to do a full NFL draft recap for all thirty-two teams in one 30-minute to an hour show is impossible. So, Chris had a just massively incredible idea to every single day go through a different division. We will go through all four teams from that division and discuss whether we liked or disliked, hated or loved what they did, and we're going to come up with a winner and a loser from the division, and we'll tell you what we like and what we don't like. So, uh, <laughs> Michael said... Chris, can I get an over under bet on Denver's win total? We'll uh, we'll when, get to Denver. We'll get when, to- all right when we get to when we get to the win totals. I'm curious to see what that is. I didn't know that that came out already. I'm very curious to see what those are and and how I think about them right now. We'll uh, now we are only going to just bring them up. We're not obviously going to give out you know what we what we think on this yet. When we finish the draft recap, let's let's then just we'll move do one. That. Yeah, just do a show and just say hey, real early. This is what we like. Yeah, so we'll we'll move into that because obviously. All of these, like if they shorten the season by any by any number, all these bets are void anyway. So that's right. It wouldn't matter. But uh, but yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, and dive into this now. We are doing the AFC East today. We got the Patriots, we got the Jets, we got the Dolphins, and we got the Bills. And we're gonna start with Chris's New England Patriots and. You got to tell me, brother. Uh, I, I want you to let me know what you think about this. Um, oh, <laughs> Michael said, no, I'm saying let's bet, Chris. You take the under, I got the over. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to bet the under. I bet the <laughs> Ask Gary, nobody had more money that we owe, that we have friends of. I had so many bets on the Broncos over last year, and they yeah. let me down. Because they, all those early games, oh, yeah. I was trying to find late wins to get me to push. And you got close. Ever so we close. got real close. If they don't shit the bed the first four weeks of the season, I'm good. Yes, you are correct. You are correct. Um, all right, so let's let's dive in here to start us off. The New England Patriots. I'm excited to hear your thoughts on this. Well, um, this yeah, was Groundhog here, let me, Day all over again. Let me let me tell every- you the the win total first, and then let me tell you what the team needs were according to these uh, different websites. Okay. Uh, Patriots win total right now is set at nine. And what their needs were, were linebacker, defensive line, and edge rusher. So they were saying that they needed defensive help. I don't necessarily know that I agreed <laughs> I was about with to say, that. 
That was that was the best defense in football last year, but okay. Sure. But they, they did have some, you know, they got some guys that are aging. Um yeah. so if you're wanting to build depth, then yeah. Um so go ahead, tell me tell me your thoughts here and then I'll I'll dive in with what I think. Bill Belichick trading out of the first round, you couldn't even get action on. You just couldn't. Nobody even take that bet because it was guaranteed he's gonna make everybody wait up all night. All the Pats fans stay up waiting for our pick. Right when it gets to the Patriots picks, I'm selling it. I'm out of here. And then on day two, what does he do? Yeah, he lets his dog make a pick, and his dog trained very well by Bill. <laughs> He's going to take some safety nobody's ever heard of from some school that nobody's ever heard of. That would be safety Kyle Duggar from Lenore Ryan. Yeah. This is this is exactly what, what I was expecting, by the way. You this explained is, it multiple times last week. It, uh, it, this that, guy it, is not a great drafter. And he just doesn't care what anybody, his board looks different than everybody else's board in the world. Yes. I kept trying to get people to understand what if Tua falls and the Patriots get him? What if Tua falls and the Patriots get him? And all I kept thinking of is you people are insane. You're just making articles up because the Patriots get clicks and Tua gets clicks. And so you're just putting them in the same article because you're lazy writers and you're terrible reporters. Yeah. Shame on you for writing fake stuff because that's what you do. <laughs> that's all you do. Because anybody who knows Bill knows he ain't moving up to take Tua because no. Bill just wants people to hate his franchise. Well, it's, it, I, I'll tell you this. I, I think a lot of it had to do with uh, he, which, by the way, at the Huddle Report, the Patriots dead last in value picks. They did not get value on a single pick that they made. Because Bill's all take, these, yeah. It, but if you ask Bill, they took guys that are Pats. They took yeah. Patriot guys. And and when I when I look at who they drafted, that's all I see. I see exactly Patriots guys. I mean, they drafted a kicker at 159. Uh, and they didn't even draft the like consensus best kicker on the board. No, they drafted a guy out of Marshall. And I think that's what Bill, I think if everybody else is saying one thing, Bill says the population's wrong. Yeah. Now, I think that is good sometimes. I think sometimes you can show that you're smarter than everybody by being different. I also think the crowd can't be wrong every time. And it's a frustrating thing if you want them to go out and get first-round draft picks and big stars for your team. They're just never going to do that. It's yeah. just not going to happen. Uh, McKinnon jumped in. He said, uh, uh, my boy Jarrett Stidham is going to be running the O, baby. I said last year at the draft, he's severely underrated, and they yep. steal it where they got him. May not be an all-time great, but definitely capable of keeping them in the game and the hunt for a championship. And Michael said, I, I, I love how he just trolls the NFL with the dog in the chair. Not a fan of his, but I got to give him credit. Oh, no. Yeah. The, the dog... I was not expecting the Patriots to be the best meme of, of the draft. I really wasn't. I thought it could happen because Bill does such a good deadpan, and, and we've got so many great Bill memes where Bill's coming to get some busted-up player that nobody wants anymore that's old and aging. Um, it, it, it's great, but I didn't see this coming. The dog and making it look like the dog took a you know made the draft pick or whatever, it's just – it's just gr unbelievable well, great on, from on top of that, it, toss in the fact that he set up his, his laptops at a kitchen table. Like, everybody else has got these extravagant setups. Oh, You're seeing all this stuff on social there's media. There's no doubt everybody else paid a designer and a decorator to come in and yes. make sure their shot looked right. And and his he just set it up in the corner of the kitchen, and here's my kitchen table. Here's this my, is where I'm going to be Here's sitting. my MacBook. Here you go, Bill. And, and that's it. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Uh, as that's far it. as their picks go, Kyle Duggar, uh, you know, obviously we didn't know anything if about him. you say you know anything about him, you're lying. Yeah. You're lying. Yeah. Obviously, His mom like, and dad know a lot about him. And His that's coaches know a lot about him. And I, I would, I'd would, i be right willing there. to bet that the Patriots know a lot about him. Yeah, Bill, Bill probably knows a lot about him. That's yeah. it. That's the list. Uh, Josh Uche, edge rusher out of Michigan, um, he was – Okay, like he he was fine at Michigan, but he I don't think he ever really stood out. Um, Anthony Jennings at Alabama, you know, I thought he was obviously Alabama kid, but you know I, I still think they kind of reached for him. Uh, Devin Asiasi from UCLA, tight end. Dalton Keene from Virginia Tech, another tight end. 
uh, Justin Rohrwasser from Marshall, the kicker. Uh, Michael Onwenu from Michigan, offensive lineman. Offensive lineman Justin Heron from Wake Forest. They took linebacker Cash Malua from Wyoming. And then with their last pick, they got Dustin Woodard, the center from Memphis, who played basically every position in Memphis. And that's yep. what Bill likes. He's he's well, versatile. That, well, I was about to say that guy's a patriot. That guy's yeah. a patriot because he everything. What is he good at? He's versatile. He can play all five positions on the offensive line. There aren't a lot of people that can play center. Yeah, and that's nice. And then oh, yeah. Bill, Bill said, "We'll teach you to play the game. We just need you to be able to play all the positions." Yeah. Um. There's nobody on this that really stands out. No. Nope. At all. Nope. And and I think this is like the perfect Patriot draft as far this, as value this goes. Bill, this is par for the course. You know, give it a dislike, give it a thumbs down, give it a boring, give it a D, give it whatever grade you want to give it. It's exactly what I expected as a Pats fan. Every year I hope for something different. You know, I, I want Santa to be real. He's just not. Yeah. He's okay. not. Draft grade, like they, they had the lowest amount of value uh, possible for for somebody at the Huddle Report. But at Pro Football Focus, they got a B. And I think I think the B I, did like, Pro Football Focus give anybody a C or worse? Yeah, there were some teams. Uh, did, really? Yeah, because I scrolled through all thirty-two and I didn't see it. Let's see. Hold on, I'm I'm trying to find one. Let's see. Uh, C plus was the Texans. So oh, okay, <laughs> all right. But yeah, I mean, a lot of oh the Titans. The Titans got a C plus. I don't agree with that, but you know whatever. Uh, you know, I mean. Look, I, I think I like what the Patriots did. Like I, you know, I'm not you a say Patriots you fan. Like it is 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 irrelevant. We don't know anything about any of these kids. If we think we do, we're wrong. Yeah, and that's the biggest it, thing. It's just one of those deals where we just got to move on. We got to, you know, whatever. I I think I think they took a lot of guys that are uh, that can be developed and and that they're yes. going to have to be. Um, Dalton well, Keene. From Virginia Tech was was legit. He's a fantastic tight end. Yeah, I was about to say no. They they got so and the, and the kid from UCLA. I mean, that's a that's a big athletic kid. Yeah. Um. Uh, you know, they're trying to find another tight end. Um. At least they're they're trying to address that. They didn't address it last year. Um. I I don't know, man. I I think some of these guys are athletes. A lot of these defensive players come from pedigrees that that Bill respects and appreciates, and and it's just. I don't know. There's nothing sexy or flashy about it. It's boring. I mean, he Every took Pats a, he fan took in the world says kid. they dislike the draft. I would dislike the draft, but I also don't know that, you know. We don't know what they're going to turn into. Uh, he, he took a couple of hardball kids. He took a Saban kid. Um, he knows that these kids are hard workers, and then you just hope you can get them in and, and develop them into, like, they're moldable. You can get them to be what you – and, you know, it, it's the same thing that you have always said – about the Patriots, right? Like it, they, you're not going to like the draft. You're not going to like what they do. Um, but draft it, it, it can fun for 31 good. teams. Yeah. It really is. It all 31 teams have a really good time on the draft. Yeah, I mean, even for, Giants fans can figure out a way to have a good time on the draft, and it, Gettleman will at least make it interesting. Bill, Bill's going to disappoint every year at the draft. You got that right. You have got that right. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one here. Uh, let's see. Michael said, they take blue-collar, hard-working kids. You can't beat that. Going to work, doing your job isn't sexy, but it is what's needed. True. Yeah, agreed. Oh, it's one of the reasons they win championships over and over and over again. Oh, 100%. 100%. And as soon as one of these blue-collar kids want to get paid, Bill says, let somebody else pay you. Yep. <laughs> and we'll go draft somebody else. We'll go find another guy that nobody's ever heard of. That's uh, That's the way it goes. All right, let's move into the next one. The New York Jets, their season win total now is up to six and a half. I believe it was six before. They needed offensive line help, they needed edge rush help, and they needed wide receiver help. And they drafted all of those positions within the first three rounds. Uh, not too shabby, really. They got uh, tackle Makai Becton out of Louisville. They got wide receiver Denzel Mims out of Baylor. And uh, so they got safety Ashton Davis out of California, who I think is uh, is pretty pretty freaking good. Um, I mean, that Kyle defense was something to behold the last couple yep. of years. And you know uh, who knows how to play. Comes from a really smart coach. Yeah, Wilcox that, is, is that very coach, well respected. That coaches him up, yeah. yeah. Like that's, I, I, I get real biased when it comes from – it's hard for me to take a 
a defensive kid that's not a star or stud. We've seen the elite athletes come from non-defensive schools, okay? But it's hard for me to take that second-tier, third-tier defensive kid from schools where the head coach or the defensive coordinator isn't just a just a defensive mind that we all trust and appreciate. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, along with that, they got edge rusher Jabari Zuniga out of Florida. They got, got a uh, couple athletes from Florida. Yeah, they got uh, LaMichael P. Ryan out of Florida. They got quarterback James Morgan out of Florida International in the fourth round. Now, let me let me go ahead and hit on him. A lot of people really high on him. If this were any other organization that was not completely tied to their quarterback, I think you could see a situation where Morgan could eventually beat out Sam Darnold for that starting quarterback position. I think Morgan is an absolute stud. I think he is a legit quarterback. Uh, the last two years under Butch Davis, he was fantastic. I think uh, I think he's great. I don't think he's going to get a fair shake for the next few years, um, and and that's kind of what sucks is like they're going no, to go the one all good in thing with you've got going for him is the GM nor the head coach aren't the guys that drafted Darnold. That's true, and I mean I could be completely wrong on this. I, I mean I'm, I'm going to tell you that that's the best benefit is like like a young quarterback or another quarterback coming in to help Trubisky doesn't help a lot because the GM and the coach are the ones that drafted him. Yeah. They're they're married to him and they know their success is tied to him. I just wonder the if the people owners, in New York are not, and if Sam don't got it, are they going to yank him for somebody that they think's got it? I think competition is good. Yes. Okay. I get. I get. Let me go on a tangent for a second here. Go ahead. I I get crapped on by a lot of my Browns fans for like wanting competition for Baker Mayfield, and my argument is this doesn't make any sense that you don't want competition. Wouldn't you want the best? Like, you're so married to this pick and this guy being a star, but isn't it better for the team if the best guy, if somebody comes in and beats him out in practice and beats him out in training camp and wins the job, isn't it more important that the better player have the job, not the most deserving because of where he was drafted and what the team invested in? Isn't it, isn't it better for you, the fan, to have the best guy playing? Yes. Because I just had the same argument on draft night. When Jake Fromm went to the Bills, got a couple of Bills fan friends, and I was like, dude, I think – I'm not saying Fromm is going to beat out uh, Josh Allen, but I think it's a 50-50 chance that that Fromm could be a better quarterback than Josh Allen and win that job. And they all got mad at me, and I just said, isn't it – I don't get that you being mad that – what if this guy takes you all to the next level and wins the Super Bowl with you? Like, yeah, or, are you or mad just, then? Or get you are you out pissed of the first off round. then? You know, like or wins a playoff game. Yeah. I mean, uh, Patriot fan. there were a sec of Patriot fans that were pissed off when Drew Brees got healthy that Bill didn't give him the job back. Oh, and they, they were they, like, you can't lose your job to injury, man. Like, it's not cool. Like, he's the guy that we got paid. Yes, he was the star. And nobody knew Tommy, and nobody cared about Tommy. And then Tom won the Super Bowl, and it's all over. It's all over for Bledsoe, yeah. I'm with but you. you. But you. But it was better for the franchise for them. To, look, Bill saw it. Just trust the coaches and let it be a real competition. That's all I want is competition. Yes. My biggest problem with the Browns is it's not – Baker runs his yak a lot, and I get frustrated with that. My issue is simply he wants the job given to him. Yeah. And I don't think anybody should have their job given to him. I think somebody should constantly be behind them pushing them. Well, I think that James Morgan is, is the type of quarterback that will push for that job. And uh, I kind of think Gase will, will, will give him an opportunity. That. I mean, I mean, I, like it, last year was crazy for Gase, <laughs> and and yet, I mean, they still won what seven games last year. They won seven games. They, they had to do what six games without Sam, four games without Sam. Yeah, yeah. I, and and my God, it was a disaster. Oh uh, no, it was it was awful. But but to be fair, they didn't have anybody backing them up either. So. No. You know. Well, the backup wasn't bad. I was a boy from Northwestern, but and he he gets hurt in like the third quarter of the first game against the Browns, yeah. and then they go to the third string quarterback, and now it's nobody's three deep at quarterback. Who was that? Was that Luke Falk? No, it was uh, Simeon, Trevor Simeon. Well, it, it, Simeon, yeah, but the the third string, I thought. Oh, was, who the third stringer was? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I thought I, I thought it was Luke Falk, and he ended up getting cut like almost. I mean, I'm, as soon I'm as sure, as soon as Sam got back, they're yeah. like, "You hit the bricks." Yeah, it was it was pretty pretty ridiculous. Uh, let's go through the rest of these picks here. Offensive tackle Cameron Clark out of Charlotte. 
Uh, cornerback Bryce Hall from Virginia, who I think is a stud. Uh, cannot believe that they got him in the fifth round. And uh, punter Braden Mann out of Texas A&M. Now, that might be their best pick of this entire draft because Braden Mann was a friggin' beast as a punter. Uh, Everybody but, in this division drafted a player that I don't think needs to be drafted in drafts. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, it kind of drives me insane. Yeah. I mean, Braden Mann is is legit. Uh, who? Somebody else said that. Um, I thought somebody said it in the in the chat. Maybe not. But yeah, Braden Mann so, is is so. Legit. Let me let, let's let's analyze this. Okay, you named off all the players. That's great. Let's 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 yeah. get down to the nuts and bolts of it. All right. Uh, Makai Becton. I, I've told you my thoughts on him. I would stay away from him. I didn't. I, he was I, without question in both of our minds the fourth best tackle out of all these yeah. big offensive linemen. He's, right? he's obviously the, massive, and and if you can develop him correctly then yeah. yes, he's got all the tools that you need. Uh, but, you know, I he never really stood... Like, he was the best lineman that Louisville had last year, but Louisville's he line was He played two trash. games his entire career against NFL talent. Yeah, and wasn't wasn't very good. And that's... That's it. He was tested twice in his entire career, and both times he failed those tests. And you know me, we've had this conversation. The PED scare coming out of college is real simply because I now don't know how much of your production is fabricated. Yeah. If you cheated on the test, I'm morally opposed to it, but I now don't know how to grade you. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, wide receiver Denzel Mims in the second round. So what? I have an opinion about this. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I'll toss mine back out there because I said it last week. It's I like Mims. I like Mims a lot. I was very adamant before this draft happened that I think this is going to be an excellent draft for the receivers. I don't want to see any of them go to New York because that is a place where I don't think any of them can succeed. I I think, like, I I want to trust Gase. I think that if he can get the I, right I, quarterback in there, or, or at least get the, the quarterback playing well, whoever it is, then I think, obviously, your wide receivers are going to benefit from that. But uh, Denzel Mims had had the dropsies a lot last year, and 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 not just last year. I mean, just over his career, and and I don't know that he's really developed in that area. He has got all the tools that you would need. Other than that, he's big, he's fast, he's a, a pretty legitimate route runner from what I you know from what I've seen. Yeah. And you and I have watched Baylor a lot, a lot, you know, a, a lot, a whole lot. So I. For where they got him, I mean, they got him at pick fifty nine. So, oh I think, yeah, no, he felt. I yeah, I wanted to see him go to another team, almost any other franchise. I just don't trust this organization. He he will take over uh, for Robbie Anderson, and I think he will be a day one starter. Um, but he he's well, yes, got he's, some work to he's do. now instantly the number one receiver. Not a lot of these rookies are going into their teams being the number one receiver. Yeah, and and he will be. So, he will be. Not just the number one. There ain't a number two. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, <laughs> Michael said Gase looked grumpy as hell during the draft. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think. He put his kids around him, and it made it look even weirder to me. It was, was, it was strange. Like, I, before, you were just this creepy old guy, and now you've got your kids around you, and it's just like it didn't soften you up at all. No, it really didn't. It really it did, didn't. It, like, you still look weird to me. Yeah, I mean, this it is coming was, from a guy that looks weird. Okay, I'm okay with that. But yeah, and so it's, as as far as cool. their as far as their needs go, uh, they they drafted for their needs. They and, addressed their needs with yeah. the picks they took. I don't know that I really like the picks they took though. I and I, I'm in the same boat that you are. I just I I don't know. You know, I think they got some value at at some of the picks. Um, yeah, no, they they absolutely did. I mean, I'll tell you this: if the quarterback turns out to be their quarterback, and and he ends up being half decent and winning the job and becoming a starter in the NFL, that's hard to hate. But that's yeah. a that's, that's a big a reach. Big, that's a big if, man. Yeah, that's a that's a massive if. And the same thing with Beckton, right? Like Beckton, with as big as he is and everything, if he turns out to be a legitimate tackle, then yeah, you got him at the eleventh pick, like the fourth the, tackle taken the, in the draft. Like, the, but here's the here's the thing. Here's the thing, all right? 
the the Texans had this problem last year, and they're going to have it again this year, by the way, of having one great tackle is awesome. When the rest of your offensive line sucks, it really doesn't matter. Now you, yeah, it, you it, the, the offensive line didn't get any better when when what's his ass went to went to Houston. Okay. Well, it, look, I'll say this: like they had two rookies starting last year. Like they, but, you know, the Texans. I think the Texans can improve. Hey, I'm not saying the Texans can't improve. I'm saying yeah. that adding him to a bad offensive line didn't make them better. No, they that's, were that's still bad. Point. Yeah. If Becton is the goods. Is the rest of the Jets' offensive line good? And does that make them good? Like, it's a step in making them good. Like, you got to yeah. get a free agent, and you got to draft another one next year, and you got to – like, offensive line is one of the hardest pieces to build because one great pl- – you can get a great edge rusher, and he can make a front seven look awesome. Okay? Yeah, yeah you're right. You can have the best – tackle in the world best guard in the world if the other four pieces are crap your quarterback is still gonna get hurt yeah you're you're right you're right um now i don't know that the jets offense is bad by the way i i haven't paid attention to their offensive line enough to care this early in the game i'm gonna tell you this their offense is shit and if their offensive line was really good and the rest of their offense was that bad there's no fixing that no, you're, <laughs> There's no fixing that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, let, let's go with whether or not we like it. I, I, I'm gonna. I, th- if there was a neutral feeling, and that's this is kind not of hatred for any of these teams. Let, let's 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 toss that in there. Let's let's make it neutral. If we because I, I, I really feel like I just put my hand in lukewarm water to where I don't know that my hand is in water. I I don't like it, but I don't hate it. Like I, I could see it working no, out really I, well. Um, I don't hate it. I I like some of the players. I, the the uh, the 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 kid from Florida, the edge rush from Florida, like I think that guy's Zuniga. gonna be good. Yeah, you know, I, th- I think Mims has the goods, but I think he's gonna be a bust because I said this is my biases coming out in the yeah. grade. Any of these receivers are bust. I thought these, I thought this receiving class was gonna be bust proof, unless one of them went to the Jets, and then that guy's gonna be the bust. Their their first two picks are projects. Um, that have so. all of that's, the tools. That's hang on. That's a hard pill to swallow, though. Yeah. You're a bad football team, and the first two picks, you kind of need to be guys that you hit on. Projects are not hit on. Projects are yeah. Maybe we'll finish in a month. Maybe it takes six months. I don't know when this damn room is going to be done. Yeah. Maybe maybe it could take you know two seasons for them. I mean, we, who knows? We may never finish the bathroom and, and we if just it takes, sell the house as is. I'll say this, if it takes two seasons for Denzel Mims to become a good wide receiver and two seasons for Makai Becton to become a good offensive lineman, Gase will not be there to reap the benefits. I, absolutely. If it takes two seasons then they're then they didn't they weren't good. Yeah. So, it is <laughs> the, it the is modern what NBA, is. NBA NFL is it's just different. It's yeah, different now. No, you're you're 100 right, right. Let's get off them. Let's uh let's move on. Let's go but ahead. I like these other two. Let's talk about the Miami Dolphins. Okay, six wins. They needed quarterback, safety, and offensive line help. Um, Had I, a lot of draft capital too. So yeah, a ton. Uh, yeah. just a ton. Um, I, all right. So let's let's kind of roll through these picks really quickly. Uh, they got Tua Tagovailoa quarterback. At number five, at number eighteen, they got Austin Jackson out of USC. I thought that was a little high. Uh, they got Noah, but they needed the tackle. And I don't think they could trade back. No, no. I, th- I think I think Austin Jackson could be good. I think he could I be. I think he right. was the best tackle left on the board, and they needed a tackle, and they couldn't trade back. Yeah. Uh, cornerback, they got Noah Igbenogny from yep. Auburn, um, mm-hmm. who was, I he was he was fine. I guess. I thought he was good. I thought he, he had a good year. It was, yeah, but it was a bit of a reach to take him in the first round. I mean, it was just, it was a little crazy. Um, but, I mean, you know. What, That's just Gary Hayden on Auburn. No, no, no. This is, like, nobody else had him projected to be a first-round pick. Like, he, he, Okay, that's fine. I mean, it, it, let's see. At the Huddle Report, he was uh, he was ranked number 54 on their board. Like, he was nowhere close but to being a first-round But that's the Huddle Report, right? I, Agreed, agreed. Where, where was the kid from Bill Belichick's draft? I, it, Project it. Oh, Belichick's. 180th? 500th? Yeah, but the Patriots had, like, the worst value of any team but, okay. on the— But that it, doesn't mean it's wrong. I, agreed. I understand. I just I thought it was a little bit of a reach to go there. But if they really like him, then I don't see— You know, I, I could see him being good. They wanted so, a cornerback that faced up against some of the best wide receivers in the history of college football. And they, This yeah. kid did that. 
Yeah, he certainly did. He certainly okay. did. We at least know this. These DBs taken out of the SEC, especially the SEC West this year. They've all been tested. They, they were all at least tested. Okay. Nice. This wasn't Becton who had two games against real talent. All right. Yeah. And and the kid on top of that had to had to go against AJ Brown and DK Metcalf last year, who both ended up being stud wide receivers in the NFL in yeah. the first season. I'm, I'm I'm just telling you, I think he's way better than you're giving him credit for. I, I like their draft. I like their draft a lot. Oh no, I, I I do as well. And obviously we'll get to, you know, like, dislike, love, hate, whatever. Uh interior offensive lineman Robert Hunt out of Louisiana, uh you know, UL Lafayette, whatever you want to call him. Uh, they took Raquan Davis from Alabama in the second round. They got safety Brandon Jones out of Texas, who, when he was healthy, was great. Uh, interior offensive lineman Solomon Kindley out of Georgia. That's another massive dude. Uh, Just big body. Yeah, they got uh, Jason Stobridge out of North Carolina. They got edge rusher Curtis Weaver out of Boise State, who was an insane value pick. Uh, in, this kid in the fifth fell. Round. But do you think it's just Boise wasn't typical Boise dominant? No, I think I think there know, had to be small some schools. There had to be something else going on. There there had to be something else. Like I, I don't know what it is. Like I haven't seen the reports. We didn't see the Boise players get taken the way we usually do. But not that they have ten or twelve, but they usually have two or three that get drafted. But they get drafted pretty early. Let's see on the on the PFF big board. Uh, Curtis Weaver was the twenty sixth best prospect, and they got him at the, let's see, 164th pick. Yeah. So there was something else going on there. I don't know. Something, what something's weird here. I yeah. thought that was a steal. I just thought, holy shit, man. Yeah. I mean, he's an incredible pass rusher, and and they needed some help with that as well. Yep. Um, you know, on top I of that, uh, I'm a toy is what I thought. So they they got they got Malcolm Perry in the seventh round, uh, quarterback out of Malcolm or out of uh, out of Navy. Navy. Yeah, who, I who, love that pick too. Versatility, baby. Oh, yes, he can be a running back. He can be a wide receiver. He can be. He they can have be him as quarterback slash wide receiver, um, and and I think he's going to do a lot. I think he's going to line up in all of them. I I agree a hundred percent. Now, their sixth round pick. This is the one that drives you crazy. I don't. I just don't understand. I don't. <laughs> Blake Ferguson I don't out of LSU. This, my, this is my boy. Long he got snapper. LSU to fourteen. It was a little bittersweet for me because I just don't understand this. Why would you draft a long snapper? I don't I don't even know what makes a long snapper a good long snapper. I uh <laughs> here's here's my here's my argument, okay? Here's my argument. You've heard this conversation at least three times already, Gary. Yeah. Because you have to listen to me talk all the time. I'll put it out there to the ethos. There are thirty two long snappers in the NFL. That's the list. Yeah, there's, there's no Nobody backup. has a backup. There are 32 of them. They usually play for a decade or two, all right? They can last a long time. That means there are 32 human beings in the whole world that do this. I promise you, you can go find somebody who's one of those 32 to do it for the league minimum of now 300 and something thousand dollars a year, Okay. I don't understand why you would spend a draft pick and you say, oh, well, it's a six-round draft pick. That doesn't matter. Um, let me interest you on a guy that got taken two picks later to the Brownies. Donovan Peoples-Jones is the ultimate dynamite flyer, I believe. This yeah. guy had a second or third-round draft grade, uh, and he fell. You can talk about the greatest quarterback of all time. Well, well Tom is, is that, but that's hard to – that's shooting. I understand. I'm not saying that you need to be shooting for a Hall of Famer. On, in you're this. at least swinging the bat. You're at least taking exactly. the bite at the apple to see, is this the best apple you've ever had? Right. When you get the long snapper, if he is the greatest long snapper in the history of the NFL, people will still not know his name. equate to wins? That, it, it won't. It won't. The, the margin of difference between number one and number 32 has to be this. Yeah. Uh, McKinnon jumped in on the on the chat. He said, Dolphins absolutely killed this draft. Flores is building something up. I'm actually pretty excited to see. Michael Me said, too. Michael I, just, said, uh, I don't understand. Listen, had oh, they yeah. taken Thaddeus Moss right here, I would. This would be the first, first team that I would say, love, love, love. Take a <laughs> swing on a kid that was injured, and that's the only reason he fell. Yeah. He had a hell it. of a draft, draft grade. Realized he had foot surgery, and nobody wanted to touch him. Swing at him. And if he's a bust, Throw him away because he was a six round pick and pay this guy three hundred grand. Call him and say we really want you to come. Uh, Chris's favorite long snapper got picked up. Uh, Michael jumped in with that, and then he said Malcolm Perry was a Bill type pick. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. 
I mean, it makes sense. Uh, oh, and, and that's oh, what Brian oh, Malcolm Jordan Perry. Said. I'm sorry. Yeah, Mal- sorry no, Malcolm yeah, Perry. Ferguson. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt that Bill had that name circled on his board, and he was waiting to to the last pick to take them. No, yep. no, no doubt. Everyone keeps bitching that I'm not drafting a quarterback. I'll draft a quarterback, you sons of bitches. <laughs> take a guy and put him a wide receiver. And that's Brian Flores out of that Bill Belichick tree. He saw him and he was Julian Edelman. Julian Edelman played quarterback for Kent State. Yep, exactly. He's thrown five passes for the Patriots. Yeah, all of them touchdowns. Believe that. Boom. Do what you got to do. I uh, I honestly love what they did in the draft. I thought it was I great. I, I I I agree with McKinnon, man. I but I I like Brian Flores. I think Brian Flores is the first guy out of the Belichick tree that actually. And I was worried. Because I thought he had potential, and I thought they forced him taking a job too soon. I didn't know that he'd be ready because he only ran the D. De- he wasn't even officially the defensive coordinator, yeah. but he had only been running the defense for one year. Other than that, he was a position coach. I I he really didn't think, have experience. I think that this organization has turned a new leaf. They have obviously yeah, changed over quite a bit. This looks like a well-run franchise right now, uh, and obviously the only thing that we've seen is what they did last year, and they didn't they didn't tank last year. They went out and they with with the guys that they had with bums with bums they won what five games I mean yes and they fought hard in game the games that they lost towards the end after the first couple of games where they got the shit kicked out of them yeah and people thought tanking for Tua and it's over because they were just getting housed it by everybody they turned around and they were in dog fights man they they won at the Patriots in a game that the Pats had to have. Needed. For one, and two, them winning actually hurt them in the draft. They didn't care. They didn't, didn't care. care. They wanted Those to guys win. Fought like hell for Brian Flores. I'm yeah. I'm excited to watch this team just because I I want good things for Flores. I really really do. Yeah, I I agree with you. All right, uh, we're already an hour plus deep into this. Let's go ahead and move into the Bills. Ah, <sighs> the Buffalo Bills. Needed an edge rusher. They needed wide receiver. They needed a running back, which I think they just needed one, uh, running back depth more so than anything. Uh, their over under right now is eight and a half wins for the regular season win total. I so you know what? How about do you want to start off, or you want me to just go through the picks? Because they didn't have a ton of them. Are you going to go through the? If you're going to go through all the picks, just do let's, that real let's quick. Let's just go ahead and roll through that. The edge rusher AJ Epinesa, they got at 54. He was second round pick out of Iowa. Uh, I think that was a steal. Um, his his combine numbers hurt him, but we'll just run through the picks and yeah. then we'll then we'll uh, ask him. Running back Zach Moss out of Utah. Wide receiver Gabriel Davis out of UCF was a fourth round pick. Fifth round they took Jake Fromm, quarterback out of Georgia. Sixth round kicker Tyler Bass out of Georgia Southern. Round six, they got uh, wide receiver Isaiah Hodgins out of Oregon State. And round seven, cornerback Dane Jackson out of Pittsburgh. Um, all in all, I I liked what they did here. Um, I You you think very high. Let's, let's go ahead and talk about the highest profile guy, which would be Jake Fromm. His biggest issue is he has got tiny hands, right? And, and while that's not that big of an issue at Georgia... When you're playing in Buffalo in the cold, that could be a problem. So, I, I'm i not as high on him in this situation. Although, I could still see him being a better quarterback than Josh Allen. Uh, I don't think he's great. I don't think he's got any of the measurables that would make you think that he's a fantastic quarterback. But one thing he does have that Josh Allen does not is he does not turn the football over. So, you know. Here's I, what I want for my quarterback from the Buffalo Bills. Okay. I think the Buffalo Bills could easily be – here's the thing. Here's what I need from the quarterback. I need him to be Brad Johnson. I need him to be Trent Dilfer. Yeah. Don't turn the football over. Don't lose the football game. Make one or two plays in the whole game. That's it. Yeah. That's it. I don't need you to run a two-minute offense every drive every year and, and, and win the game, all right? What makes, what makes Tom great is the fact that he stresses you out 80% of the game, but you know he's coming back. Yeah. Okay. Peyton Manning had that about. Like they didn't kick the shit out of a lot of people, but they were never out of it. Atlanta, looking at you. Um, <laughs> I think the Bills are a really good football team from top to bottom. Sean McDermott they need is a, a trigger man. He's an incredible that coach. Just won't lose the football game. Yeah. 
Uh, McKinnon jumped in. This is about the Dolphins, by the way. I was at the Chiefs game when the Dolphins beat the Pats, and the whole stadium started chanting, let's go Dolphins, and yelling Fitzmagic. He said it was nuts. Uh, hell, there's a petition going around for him to come beat the drum in Kansas City during one of the games this year, which would be hilarious if, <laughs> if that actually happened. <laughs> Because hey, the Chiefs needed that to be able to get the number two seed. I know. I mean, I if, know. if they if the Pats win that game, you got to wonder: Do the Chiefs even make the Super Bowl? I mean, I mean obviously it's changes. all revisionist history. A lot changes. Well, yeah, so anyway, we go back. But yeah, um, I like this pick though. I like. I, so we'll go down. I like Epinesa a lot. Yeah. So first, his measurable. First pick, where was it? Oh, it, it was getting Stefan Diggs. Yeah. Hell yeah, of they, a first round pick. Yeah, they they did um, all right. He got pretty good. I like Zach Moss a lot. Yeah, a lot. agreed. You made me watch a lot of Utah football last year, way more than I wanted to. And <laughs> listen, this Moss guy was is good. The biggest. This guy was the biggest thing the offense had. Oh, he was. He was about the only thing. I. I think the quarterback yeah. Tyler Huntley, like he's not uh, undrafted free agent. I forget where he went now, but nah. there's a chance he could make a roster. Uh, but but Moss was was the offense. Moss was the offense. Yeah, Moss was the offense. This kid's good, and they already have a really good running game. The fact they needed running back. That's somebody who's been watching the Patriots play a lot and thinks yeah. you got to have seven of them or you can't win. Yeah. Um, Gabriel and, Davis and then, from Central Florida. And then Gabriel Davis, I fast, thought fast. this dude has played in meaningful football games in college football. Oh, we we have seen him numerous times at Central, and he can fly. Yes. He can take the yes. top off the defense easily. So, and yeah. And I love the Jake Fromm pick because. I think you're going to know is from the guy or not. Pretty. I just want competition. At least yeah. now, Josh Allen has to show up for work and know, I got to go. I got to yeah. go. If I play like I played against Houston in that playoff game, yes, it was a playoff game. So the fact that we made the playoffs a good thing. If I play like that, I'm going to lose my job because there's somebody behind me, and last year there was a no-name behind me. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think about the kicker here? Because we talked about this. I hate, I hate the idea. All four of these teams wasting a draft pick when they could have taken somebody to swing a fence at. Okay, they yeah. just could have. It. Uh, I want to swing the bat. Tyler Bass was the second ranked kicker out of college last year. Um, the first one was Rodrigo Blankenship, and did did Rodrigo even get drafted? Who did he? Nope. Which is crazy. Rodrigo was not the first. Everybody that had a draft board that I was watching the draft go through had had this guy as number one and the Patriots kicker number two. That's interesting. That is that's very interesting. That's I'm trying. Blankenship to wasn't the top. He was the third, I think. But he went to Georgia. These other two kids went to small schools. We know him because he played at Georgia. Yeah, and he. I mean, that's not to say that Rodrigo can't kick, but Tyler Bass. Was most kickers don't get drafted. I bet a lot of Georgia Southern games last year. Uh, so you know that that I I saw him kick multiple times. I don't know that I ever saw him miss a kick. Like I I don't think I ever saw him miss. And he I mean he killed the ball. The, the dude fine. killed it. But he, I I my, still don't know that he's worth a sixth round pick. My my problem with taking a kicker from Georgia Southern is is show me a high pressure situation where he actually had to kick the ball. Okay, because they didn't play in a single game where there was eighty thousand people at. And every eye on the TV was white. At least Blankenship had that. Right? That's, it. That's true. Blankenship had to nut up and go kick the football in big, meaningful football games to where if he misses, it costs his team a game. And he's the reason they lost the South Carolina game. Yeah, 100%. 100%. But uh, I, I, at least he's got experience doing that. Yeah. Uh, the last two picks that they had, wide receiver Isaiah Hodgins out of Oregon State and cornerback Dane Jones, or sorry, Dane Jackson out of Pittsburgh, um, those are the two kind of flyers that you would like to see a team. This is make biting apples. I don't know anything about these guys, but you're just biting. You're just taking you, a swing, man. You, you and I, to. you and I watched Hodgins uh, in the first game of the year. We were sitting at Hollywood Casino watching Oklahoma State and Oregon State, and and the kid was lighting it up. Uh, yeah. In in that offense, in Jonathan Smith's offense at Oregon State, he was legit. However, that's one of those kind of air raid offenses. You don't he doesn't have all the measurables. He's not like a, a massive guy. He's not the fastest guy in the world, but he's a legit receiver. Like you know he can catch the ball. You know he can get the ball in the end zone. Um yeah, and then same thing. Look, Dane Dane Jackson out of Pittsburgh, like you know he's coming from a good defensive scheme. You know that he he can uh he can handle, excuse me, complex defenses. Because 
I mean, that's exactly so what they want, do there. I want an athlete Narduzzi that, runs a complex that measures scheme. well and might be smart, and and we can just try it. And maybe maybe they're the next star, and maybe they're not. But I, but it's worth a the, shot. Yeah. If you're the best kicker in the in the history of the game, okay, that's that's fantastic. You're still not worth if the your top team two. Team is not good picks. enough to be in meaningful games where you have to make meaningful kicks. Then nobody knows your name. Yeah. I mean, if Steve Gaskowski or 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 um, Adam Vinatieri went to Detroit instead of the Patriots, nobody knows his name. He'd be the greatest kicker in the world. Nobody knows his name. Nobody cares. Yeah, you're right. Because you're not kicking in meaningful games. Uh, Michael jumps in. Uh, well, before we answer his question, um, I I like what the Bills did here. Oh, I do, I do too. I, I think I'm, they I'm, had. They, it was but a I like this trip. front office, and I have for the last couple of years. I told yeah. you that they they, they have. I didn't like the improved. Josh Allen pick, but I've liked everything else, and I like the way they build the team. Yeah, I I agree. So with that, uh, winner and loser. Um, I think the Pats were the losers. Yeah, I think so too. I I think I like. I think I like what the Dolphins did more than the Bills. I would too. I'd uh, say they, that. They, well, had, they had a lot more picks. That's to what deal I was going to say. Had, that's that's the other thing is it's hard to it's hard to parse out the fact they they got a lot, but they had a lot to get. Yeah, they they certainly did, and I mean they they gave up a lot to get those picks. They wanted draft capital, they got it. So, um, Michael ended up, and we'll close out with this: Are the Pats the favorite to win that division? If not, who? I would have to say you you have to favor them. The uh, last I saw, and I don't remember when I looked they, at this. They are because the Pats have. It, it was minus 120. It was the lowest odds they've ever been. It's basically yeah. a, an even bet right now. Well, it's a, the the win total for the Pats is nine. The win total for the Bills is eight and a half. Um, so if you just go based on that, like if you're if you're going Vegas, yeah, the Pats are the favorite. Uh, are they our favorite to win the division? Yeah, I think so. Until somebody knocks Bill off, I mean, what have they won it? Fourteen straight years, something like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the truth, and this is the fact of it. Show me a quarterback because this division has just printed crap when it comes to the quarterback position. Josh Allen's not winning this division over Bill Belichick. I don't care who our quarterback is. I, I think he's probably right. Defense to make that kid look stupid every week. Yeah, it, look, it, the Dolphins got Tua. I, he ain't ready this year, so you know, I mean, it, he could eventually. Uh, move into that. I believe it when but, I see it because once again, I've yeah. I've, I've seen great quarterbacks be. T- Everybody said Sam Darnold was going to be the guy. Right? Uh, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Keep keep bringing them on, and and it's not who's playing quarterback for the Patriots anymore. It's Bill Belichick's going to make your guy look stupid. Yes, he I makes mean, really good quarterbacks look it, mediocre it's, sometimes. It's, it's where right? he, yeah, it's where the uh, it's where that whole thing the the Sam Darnold meme came from. Like I'm seeing ghosts. Yes. Same thing. Yes. He uh, made a professional athlete admit on the sidelines, I don't even know what I'm looking at. It's that complicated Yeah, what they throw at you. I'm not smart enough to watch it and be able to explain it or break it down. I've just watched the results for 20 years. Yeah. Michael uh, jumped in. He said, I take Buffalo, Miami, Pats, Jets, finish. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I... I just I, I don't buy that. If you would bet all. Miami to win the division this year over the Patriots, you're not paying attention to football. Yeah, it's they're they're not ready yet. They're, they're still a long way away. I I I want Miami to get better. I like Flores a lot. Can they win a game? Sure. Can they win the division? I, once again, show me a quarterback that can go in New England and consistently win. I I don't I hadn't seen it. I'm not going to say that I expect it anytime soon. So there you go. I think it'll be the Pats for now. Um. I think let's go wrap it up. Anything yep, else we need to hit? So, Michael said, thanks, fellas. Great chatting with you. We appreciate it, Michael. Appreciate Thank you, you for hopping right. in. Everybody else that jumped in on the chat, we appreciate you as well. You guys have been fantastic. Um, I think that's going to wrap. Is there anything else we need to hit? Nope. Is it? That, out of here. that works for me. All right. You guys know what to do. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you subscribe at any of the locations at which you can subscribe. If not, go over to winningcureseverything.com. It's got everything over there for you. And, uh, and you can make sure and leave nice reviews on your podcast apps or whatever the video platforms are that you are watching on. We definitely appreciate that. All you guys that chatted, make sure you share out the show with your buddies. Tell everybody you know about it. We would love to see the numbers continue to grow, and they, uh, they have done so over the past few months uh, while we were in this quarantine for sure. Thank you all for jumping in. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we will uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, 